Hi, I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Today we're taking a trip to the Five Medals at the Trace event. I had the opportunity to sit down with one of the event organizers, Mike Judson, to hear his passion and hear him talk about the inspiration and the event that continues on today. Part of our mission at Five Medals is to share the history and the culture of our area. And this Northern Indiana, North Central Indiana, where we're at, really uh, has a great history. And Five Metals actually was a, his Potawatomi name was Wanangasea, and that um, translates out to five coin or five metals. And he was a very prominent Potawatomi chief right in this area. He he was a, a confederate of Little Turtle out of Kikianga, basically Fort Wayne. Right. Um, he was at the signing of uh, of the uh, Treaty of Greenville, which which um, that had popped into my mind earlier in our conversation that um, talking about our area history. You know that treaty of that event more than the treaty, I think, was was so important to the European American part of our history because of all the people that were there with Wayne, you know, you had Harrison, you had Lewis and Clark, yeah. uh, you know, these guys, William Wells, I mean, all these guys are, are, are there in, in one spot, but kind so of anyway, before um, they came the, the Titans of history that they, that they are today. It, it, indeed. They were subalterns and, yeah. you know, uh, and, and out here on the frontier. So learning their craft actually, I suppose. Yeah. He just, you know, he was, he was an important individual. He's an important chief for his people. And, you know, he did a, he did a few things. I mean, he, um, uh, he and little turtle, little turtle was in my opinion, one of the finest, uh, st strategists and tacticians, um, in history. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you look at his, you look at his leadership in the Harmar campaigns and St. Clair yes. uh, campaigns back to what, 1780, I think it was yeah. when La Balm real early came into there. Fort Wayne. And I mean, he just, he was a, he was a force, but he and other chiefs like five medals and Topanabi and white pigeon and Matea, um, these chiefs in this area, they, they understood what was happening with the Westward expansion, whether you agree or disagree with it and all mm -hmm. the other stuff that goes with that, you know, they, they could see it happening. Well, Five Metals was fighting very hard and working hard with the U.S. government and with the Quakers, as it turns out, to bring agriculture, the most modern agriculture uh, available of the day, to bring it to this area and get his villages and other villages on board. And it was it was a daunting task, and, and ultimately it, it failed. The experiment failed. And I think there was some hanky panky going on behind the curtain. Absolutely, um, yeah. With that involved maybe money, um, yeah. As, and and they were they were kind of victim to that. Um, you know, he was he was at the siege of Fort Wayne. I mean, he knew Harrison uh, from oh my gosh, well from from Greenville, seventeen ninety five certainly, but from other meetings along the way. And you know, just a just a great character and and. The research is really, really difficult when you start diving into the Native American history, but you keep at it. I've been researching him for 15 years. You keep at it and you keep digging and little snippets just keep popping up and you learn more and more and more. Hmm. And um, so that's kind of the, the nutshell history on, on five metals. And the, the initial idea was um, we need to honor this guy and we need to honor the culture that was here at that time. And so while it isn't necessarily going to be the first thing you would see when you walk into the event, it's there mm -hmm. and, and we want to keep it there. And it's in our, it's in our, um, you know, when we, when we share things about the event and when I write, um, it's there. And so along with that though, we, we share, uh, we've got a great group that comes in and they do the uh, LaSalle expedition. Hmm. And so now you're getting some really early history of this area and these guys do a fantastic job. Um, and so all of our, you know, the, um, the European, uh, countries pretty well are represented at the event. Um, and we have, um, we just have a myriad of the demonstrators. You touched on that earlier, uh, with, you know, like the blacksmiths, tinsmiths, um, we have a wonderful gunsmith that'll be with us this year. And so we've got these, the trades of the day. Uh, we want those demonstrated. I love to hear that you have those kinds of, of trades 
and and th- that knowledge being shared. I mean, as as much as we all love, you know, we we think of you know, there's a woodworker and there's a blacksmith. There was so much more going on at that period, and I think sometimes the public perception of the era is is really influenced by events and by media that portrays the time. And when we stick to war or battles and blacksmithing woodworking, you kind of forget about everything else. I was my research this summer, uh, my wife and I try to grow a garden every year with some vegetables and things. And I found a whole resource on 18th century gardening techniques and tools and the clothing you know, that somebody would wear if they were a gardener, you know, attending to an estate's gardens and things. Outstanding. And I just, I just fell in love with it because it's kind of that mundane little slice of history that, you know, might get left by the wayside. It's not the flash bang necessarily really cool thing, but that happened and that was there and it was special in the, you know, just like everything else from the period was. Yeah. It's yeah. That stuff. And there's, and there's uh, it's a hidden gem when you run into these things and I think it, it is important to share that with the public because, um, you know, they, again, they see the, they see the, the normal things that you would see in an event and they don't realize that these folks had to manage their lives the same way we do today. Mm-hmm. And it takes, it takes everything, um, to, in order to do that. The other, the other aspect too, that is, uh, I think been very important on the living history circuit. And, um, and we will have those folks with us at five metals, which is Maggie Delaney. And, and I'm not sure if she's, if, uh, her companion will be old Badger or Higgins, maybe both. <laughs> and then, um, uh, uh, Parson John will be, uh, be there Sunday morning for our divine service. And, um, but it's this whole idea and this exposure of the low end of society mm-hmm. and all of these jobs that had to get done and perhaps more in the urban environment, the settlements than out on the frontier, but still these jobs that had to get done and the jobs that were being done by people just for daily survival. And so when public sees this stuff and when school kids see this stuff, it just opens up a whole new world for them that they don't have a clue about. And so that's, you know, again, for five metals, that's kind of the original concept of this event. Um, and the, and the, uh, organization is, uh, just the, the preservation of history through education and demonstration. The Five Medals event and the events like it that happen throughout the year across the country are really some of my favorite things that go on in the muzzleloading community and the muzzleloading sport in general. It's one of our key outreach points, I think, to the general public to share not only our passion for history, muzzleloading, local history, and American history kind of all in one. We can share these things, share our passions with the public, and I think that shows through in each and every person that was there at the Five Medals event. It was so nice to catch up with so many of you and watch you work your crafts and hear your demonstrations. Uh, you know, seeing the public smile and, and seeing them walk away learning something was really just truly wonderful. Uh, I'd like to thank the Five Metals staff and the event coordinators, uh, Mike Judson here especially, uh, for his hard work to make an event like this happen. I think it's really important and it's a really special thing that we have these events uh, continue on to this day. If you'd like to learn more about the Five Metals event, I'll have a link to their Facebook page in the description of this video. I'll also have some more information at ilovemuzzloading.com. I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.